Welcome everyone to Marketing Your Group on Pinterest, Facebook, and Twitter. This is Sabrina, President of Crystal River Computer Users Group. I want to talk to you a little bit about your users groups and ways to help build them today because I know that we have found ourselves, all of us, user groups in a situation with declining membership and if we're going to survive, we need to evolve and uh, change. And part of that is going to be changing some of the demographics of our members, I believe. Uh, many of the user groups are now turning to tech programs and training for businesses and the 40-something age group. That is where we have gone. So one of the ways to find those that age group and those demographics is through social media. But first I want to ask you, what is social media? Uh, let me know in the chat box. Are you guys on any social media sites now? Is your user group on any social media sites? If you are, just type in Twitter, Facebook, anything, so that I kind of get an idea of what you guys are on currently. I want to say that social media is a phrase that's really being tossed around a lot these days, and it can sometimes be difficult to answer the question of what is social media. If Facebook is a social media site, and Twitter is a social media site, and YouTube is a social media site, then just what is social media? I want to suggest to you that maybe it's actually social networking or social marketing. Let me see here. Beverly says they're on Facebook, Google Plus, and TripAdvisor. Tom says personally on LinkedIn and Smug Mug. Never heard of Smug Mug. Interesting. Okay, great. Well, look, you guys, some of you guys are out there and you're getting in there and you're getting your feet wet and you're getting on social media. So awesome. Congratulations. Again, like I said, I'm going to suggest that it might actually be social networking or social marketing. And we're going to take a quick look at what the possibilities might be. Some of the social things that you can do is social, we can start with social bookmarking. You can interact through tagging and bookmarking. You can save and organize those links through the use of boards. Social news, interacting through comments and voting. Social networking, there's interacting by friends, commenting on profiles, joining groups and having discussions. Social photo and video sharing, they interact by sharing photos or videos and commenting on user submissions. There's also social learning where you can attend real-time webinars with others. I don't know if any of you have ever um, attended a webinar, but you can attend a webinar right now right inside of Facebook using Google Hangouts. Has anybody ever done that or attended anything like that? You can just feel free to type in the chat box. I am paying attention to it so that I get a chance to interact with you a little bit. So as you can see, there's a lot of things now that you can do with social, uh, the social platforms. Um, Pinterest is one of my favorite platforms, and it is absolutely, almost completely a social bookmarking site, in my opinion. It's a wonderful place to sell and connect. Uh, it's very creative, but again, it's uh, it's a that's where I save everything that I find on the internet. Is my Pinterest account. Let's see, meetups have produced members. Yes, we are also doing meetups as well. John, make it louder and slow it down. Okay, let me turn. Okay, hopefully that's better for you. As I was saying with the, with the social platforms, there's a lot of things you can do like social bookmarking, uh, you can get news there, you can network with others, you can share photos and videos, and you can attend real-time learning. You can attend real-time webinars with people. Let's get started. Here's what we're going to learn today. I'm going to share three of the top social media sites today. We're going to review the stats of each and why people are using them. We're going to talk about where to get started, uh, some of your strategies, how to grow your audience, generate more leads, increase your reach, work smarter, not harder, and how to use social media to implement key systems for your group, and how to measure your effectiveness on social media. Bill says, Meetup has afforded us a number of new members. Judy suggested that we change our study group name to MIGs. Uh, we're using Meetup as well right now, and it is bringing new members to us as well. We're using Meetup in the form of uh, SIGs, some special interest groups, and uh, that's helping. 
Clark Walker says also Yahoo Groups. I haven't tried Yahoo Groups. I'll have to take a look at that, Clark. Thank you. Let me preface this presentation by saying just because you found it on the internet or Google does not mean you have the right to use it. And I know that a lot of you know that here, but I still feel the need every time I give a presentation to make sure that people understand that. You want to be really careful about that because you do run the risk now of being booted off social media sites for plagiarism. Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn and a lot of these places are... Um, they're taking that quite seriously now, the whole plagiarism thing. There's been some recent heavy-duty lawsuits, and uh, so they, they've taken notice. So having said that, and giving the proper credit, I want to tell you that the following statistical information I'm going to share with you and graphics were obtained from the socialmediahat.com. They are one of my favorite social media sites uh, to get information about what's going on. So we're going to talk a little bit about active users, social media active users in 2014. One of the most common questions that I'm asked from both businesses and social media marketers is how many, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> how many users, <clears throat> excuse me, how many users, how many people, how many opportunities for each of the social networks. Of course, each social network is different. Some have extremely high usage every month by hundreds of millions of users, while others, the only numbers reported are registered members. Are any of these, mem any of these numbers accurate? Nope. They're changing by the second, literally. And of course, there are always questions about how they're calculated, how many fake accounts there are, uh, and things like that. I'm sure you've heard about the fake account numbers on Facebook alone, and they are some pretty astronomical numbers. Of course, each social network is different. Um, like I just said, so yet the fact remains that even with a large statistical margin for error, the membership numbers are extremely interesting. I spend a lot of time on Facebook just because of the sheer volume of numbers. Because you're bound to hit people once you get there. So the first that's the first one actually that we're going to talk about is Facebook. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it currently has 1.35 billion monthly active users, as you can see. And that was reported in September of 2014. And their actual launch date was February of 2004. So in a mere 10 years, they've grown 1.35 billion. And that's with a B, ladies and gentlemen, monthly active users. That is a seriously big number. Facebook's data is also one of the more recent sets to have been officially reported by the company and is considered to be the most accurate. And as you know, they're publicly traded now, so their numbers are uh, they're, they're pretty tight. And of course, Facebook continues to reign as the largest and most active of all the social networks. Let's take a look at Twitter for a minute. 284 million monthly active users. Their launch date was actually in March of 2006. And Twitter is continuing to, continuing to grow at a fairly steady rate. The numbers there are extremely fresh, so we can rely on them for comparison. Those were actually reported recently in October of 2014. Next up is Pinterest. 70 million registered users. Pinterest doesn't publicly disclose their membership statistics, so all data about Pinterest is currently acquired by third-party vendors. Most agree that the platform sports about 70 million users, but ranges between 20 to 30 million active monthly users. And most of these statistics and estimates are based on a study from Simeocast in July of 2013. So it's extremely likely that the numbers are soft, and as you can tell, they're not real current when we're looking at numbers from 2013. So that would lead you to ask yourself, or me to ask you, which social media should you use? Just like building a business because your user group is a business, you're going to want to treat it that way. Who is your target market? What are their characteristics? What are their likes? We need to find the similarities. 
So tell me, if, just based on what we talked about on these three, go ahead and just type this right in the chat box for me. Do you see any, what do you see when you see those numbers on Facebook and Twitter and Pinterest? Do you see anything there that like piques your interest a little bit? Go ahead and just throw any, any thought jam in the chat box for me and I'll pay attention to them. Again, your target market, you'll want to look at your uh, gender, age, employment status, or type of employment. Maybe they're retirees, uh, maybe they are employed. I have found that there's a large number of people out there right now on the internet and on social media sites that are um, looking for second careers. You know, maybe they've already completed their time in with their 20 years with the military and they're looking to build something new and different to build that second retirement income. That is a huge market that's available right now. And that's also a great market to be looking at for your computer clubs. What are their characteristics? Where do they live? Where do they shop? Where do they vacation? What are their hobbies? And you'll see why this is going to become a little bit more important here soon. With Facebook, for example, when you run ads, and my computer club does run ads on Facebook, we have an ad that runs um, 365 days a year, and we target specific neighborhoods. We target cities and um, just cities within our area so that we're not wasting that money on marketing that's going, you know, 100 miles away from where we are. What are their likes? TV shows, music, movies, maybe even other social media sites. Um, just because we're computer users groups does not mean that that's all we're interested in. Everybody has other interests. And again, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to find those other interests on those social media sites and uh, how to target them. Are you beginning to see how this information can help you determine a little bit of, about which social media platforms you should use? Knowing your target market is critical to your choices of social media platforms. If you sell video equipment and you are looking to market to people that want to make videos, which sites should you be on? And I know this is a no-brainer, it's simple, but um, it, it's just really a conducive of how you can go find that target market. Obviously, the answer to that is YouTube. And I know, like I said, I know that's a little generic. We'll get a little meatier than that. I love YouTube. I think you can find entertainment on YouTube. You can find um, things to learn on YouTube. I just personally love YouTube. That's just one of my favorite sites. So next we're going to talk a little bit about how to choose your social media. Oh, I'm sorry. Mark asked, what personal information do you give up to join Facebook? Um, you're going to give up a lot of personal information, Mark. And actually, Facebook does track everything that you do. Um, and I, people, I get that question. That's probably one of the number one questions that I get asked all the time is, um, I don't really want all my personal information out there. Unfortunately, whether you want to believe it or not, your personal information is out there. It is out there for the world to see already. Um, where you shop. Uh, where you go to the movies, that information is out there. There are statistics, uh, there are companies, there's three big major companies in the world that gather all that information and they have it in databases. Facebook has partnered with those three as well. So um, it's, it's kind of a blind thing where they um, use that information supposedly for marketing but you know, it's just like everything else. It, it gets leaked out there. So um, people can't come to your Facebook page and like, they can't get your physical address or your physical phone number or things like that unless you give it to them. You have to be very careful about what you put out there on Facebook, but it's out there and it's available. And if you're concerned about uh, being found or not being found, then you should probably just stay away from them. That's the best advice I can give somebody is if you're, if you're concerned about what information is there, Stay away. Otherwise, only put out there what you would put out there publicly that you wouldn't worry about. And we'll, I'll go into that in a little bit more detail. Okay. All right. We're going to talk a little bit about how to choose social media platforms. And I want to say that one of the things that you want to do is you're going to start with one platform at a time for your group and make sure that you're doing a great job on it.
You always want to put your best foot forward, so don't start with them all at once and then not do a great job because in the end, it's only going to hurt you. Pinterest, for example, if you're a business to customer company that sells products or services that appeal to women. As you can see by looking at this chart, Pinterest, we have 68% females on Pinterest. So if you are targeting women, Pinterest is a great place for you to be. If you look at the next one over on Twitter, you'll see that um, your target market is predominantly in the United States and likes to consume information on the go in 140 characters or less. We're going to talk a little bit deeper about some of Twitter's demographics graphics here in a minute. But these are people who are highly mobile that are on Twitter because they're and they're highly busy. So they're consuming their information in 140 characters or less. This causes grammar to kind of go right out of the window. You're going to start using things like the letter R instead of the word R for are you going and you'd use uh, the letter U rather than the word U. So there's no real grammar on Twitter. If it's readable and you can keep it under 140 characters, that's how you build a tweet. Next up, let's talk about Facebook. And like I just said, with 1 billion plus active users, just get on it and give it a try. Instagram is good for showing a more personal or fun side of, of your company or your business or your group, but it has a lot of... Um, it's about uh, photos again, so there's a lot of visual appeal there. So you're going to have to have a lot of photos if you're going to be on Instagram. Google Plus is another great platform for engaging with niche groups of people. If you have a product or service that has multiple audiences, Google Circles tool is a great way to tailor the content you share to that audience. One of the reasons I use Google Plus is because Google owns it. And as a website builder, I build WordPress websites also for a living. Um, that's where I want to get my SEO. So I am on Google because if I publish to Google Plus first, for example, then it's considered original content and Google will index it quicker. So that's a great reason to be on Google Plus right there. Next up is LinkedIn. It's a great place to connect with others in your industry, specifically if you're business to business. Uh, there's not a lot of club to club there, but you're going to find a lot of professionals on LinkedIn. You're just going to have to do a little searching to find the right places. But again, LinkedIn has got groups that are dedicated to everything you can think of. They've got groups that are dedicated to WordPress. They have special interest groups. Um, there's computer groups. Again, it's just something that you have to get out there and search. Um, I would definitely get on this platform. LinkedIn is also a place for sharing some of your more in-depth content. Like I said, again, professionals there. So if you want to draw in some professionals to your group, to your computer group that can maybe help teach, that might be a good um, a good place to look. Oh, and Jim said, explain for people what SEO is. Your search engine optimization. You have all heard the term Google knows all. And you typically search Google for the things that you're looking for, products or services. And that is what your search, that's what search engine optimization is about, is how to be found on Google. And Google indexes new content quicker than content that is similar to or duplicated of other content that's out there. And that's one of the uh, beauties of Google Plus is that when you create a post on Google Plus, for example, that information is considered uh, new content and is indexed quicker. If you do a Google search, you'll find now that all kinds of things pop up. Facebook pages pop up, people's Twitter pages pop up, um, LinkedIn posts pop up. So again, it's about the, um, it's about being found. Okay, we're going to move on to Pinterest for a minute and get a little deeper into each of these uh, social media platforms for you. Pinterest has 28.1% of Pinterest earners earn in excess of 100000 per year. The average time spent on Pinterest is 15.8 minutes. 50% of Pinterest users have children. 31.8% are male. And as we just talked about, 68.2% are female. 
Pinterest has more referral traffic than YouTube, Google Plus, and LinkedIn combined. So having said that, if I were coaching a business that was selling children's high-end, I would have to say high-end children's clothing, where would I want to be? And now this is the only only group that's going to be on Pinterest, obviously. Um, and Pinterest is also a big do-it-yourself spot. But if I'm going to sell high-end children's clothing to women, I would definitely want to be on Pinterest because based on the statistics, that's who's there. Remember, I just said they're making an excess of $100,000 a year. They have children at 68% female. Now, I don't know how much of this is stay-at-home moms. Well, I can't give you a stat on that because I don't have it. But I do know that Pinterest is also a very big do-it-yourself type spot. So if you're um, teaching people how to do it yourself in any form or fashion, Pinterest, again, is someplace that you should be looking at. This is just a quick look at... Uh, kind of what the tiles look like or the boards look like in Pinterest. And you'll see everything starts quite visually. Um, I love Pinterest because the pictures there are just so neat. So if you want to reach potential customers on Pinterest, one of the things that you need to do is start by knowing why they're there. People come to Pinterest for different reasons. And when you understand their motivations, you understand how to connect with them. With that in mind, here are six of the most common reasons people are on Pinterest today. Number one, as an internet bookmarker, like we just talked about, when you surf the web and you're looking at a website and you happen to hover over a picture on the website, you'll see the little pin it button pop up. I don't know if any of you guys have noticed that. And Beverly asked me where I got these stats. A lot of this stuff came from socialmediahat.com. They uh, stay pretty much on top of the social media stats. Uh, as I was saying, you'll, when you hover over a um, an image on a website, for example, you'll see a little pin it button pop up. And if you click on that, then you can pin that location to your own board, to the boards that you can create on your Pinterest account. And that's how I save things that I want to get back to. So I have boards created for ideas for landscaping, boards created for ideas for do-it-yourself, uh, boards created for flowers, and you have the ability to create everything that you want like that on Pinterest, and you just save all that to your boards. You can make these links visually focused also. So you can organize, like I said, recipes and flowers and all kinds of things on Pinterest. It's also a great place uh, for a source of inspiration because Pinterest is filled with so many users' favorite bookmark ideas and products, it's a great place to go looking for ideas. When you want a recipe for a chocolate cake, why not search on Pinterest to see which versions other people find delicious? If you want infographics about social media, you can find all kinds of infographics on Pinterest. And also just scrolling through your newsfeed reveals all the latest pins from your contacts because on Pinterest you're making contacts as well. And that's why Pinterest is such an easy inspiration source for a wide range of topics. The third reason people are on Pinterest is to promote their own brands. Everyone from small retail businesses to major websites use Pinterest to promote its content. The idea is to get products in front of new eyes to increase exposure. The more people who see and share a pin, you can share a pin on Pinterest in the same way that you share a status on Facebook or a post on LinkedIn. The more people who share a pin and the more attention it receives, the better um, SEO kind of juice you're getting on Pinterest. I don't know if SEO is the right word for that. but And these pins can actually link back to the brand's own website, creating traffic because traffic, you can link to these pictures. Fourth reason that people are on Pinterest is just to connect with others. At its heart, Pinterest is a social network, just like all the others, and users can interact with each other through likes and comments and repins. And when they do that, they're building and strengthening relationships. And for many Pinterest users, that's part of the appeal of the site. They connect with fellow bloggers or friends by sharing pins. They're there to relax. 
as simple as it sounds, Pinterest is relaxing. It's designed to be simple, clean, and easy to use. It gives users a way to unwind with pretty pictures that they can curate as they like. Many of the people on Pinterest are just enjoying downtime between work projects or unwinding at night before bed. The last reason, of course, is because everybody else is. Some people go on Pinterest for the same reason they got on Facebook. All their friends are doing it. For brands, this means setting up a Pinterest profile because their competitors have it. Um, we, as a club, do not have a profile on Pinterest right now. And that kind of goes back to one of the things that I said earlier about picking one platform and trying to do it well. Social media is very uh, time consuming. I personally have an account on Pinterest that I promote some of the club's stuff with, but we don't have an account there for the club right now. So when you look at the reasons outlined above, it's easy to see that not every Pinterest user is alike. So you have to think about which user you want to target. Are you, are you gearing toward getting some products or some services in front of people? Or are you looking for the inspiration seekers, the people that the do-it-yourselfers, or all of them? You want to offer content that's worth remembering, that's helpful and attractive. Do you want to build connections? Interact with the people who are most active on the site. So through thinking through the type of user you want to attract, you are better equipped to be successful. Let's take a, just a quick look at Pinterest. This is what a news feed area looks like in Pinterest. Bill James asks, so we would pin a certain special interest group on what it's about. Yes, you could do that, Jamie. What I would do is build some kind of a cool infographic or a picture or um, and then link that to your SIG, wherever your registration for your SIG is, or your meetup, or whatever that could may be. Um, you can do just you can do anything on Pinterest that you can do on any of the other sites. You just do it a little differently. You start with that big, bold visualization, and you kind of work backwards. Judy says she found some great tech humor cartoons for the newsletter she put together. Yep, you can find a lot of great stuff on Pinterest. It's one of my favorite sites. Next up, we're going to talk about Twitter for a minute. Twitter stats. The top three age groups on Twitter are your 15 to 19-year-olds, your 20 to 24-year-olds, and your 20 to 25, or 25 to 29-year-olds, sorry. 62% of your Twitter users are in the USA. Now, here is an interesting stat, and this is a usage according to Pew. It's almost even among men and women, with women edging slightly ahead. Um, Pew also reported that black Internet users continue to use Twitter at remarkably high rates. More than one quarter of online African Americans, 28%, use Twitter with 13% doing so on a typical day. Hispanic users ranked as the second most active race on Twitter at 14%. And interestingly, residents of urban and suburban areas are far more likely to use Twitter than those in rural America. So that kind of tells me that if I'm interested in selling farm equipment, I would probably be better off to pick another platform. Because like I said, with Twitter, this is going to be more your um, city dwellers and that are people that are going to be also professional people. They're consuming their content on the go. They're busy. Um, and you have got to find a way to reach them in 140 characters or less. We'll look at it just a little bit deeper and see why are people on Twitter. First of all, there's a lot of interesting people on Twitter, and we all want to surround ourselves with interesting people. Sadly, though, we don't all get the chance to do that in the real world. That's one of the super cool things about Twitter. Twitter is not necessarily meant for friends and family, but for people that you want to actually communicate with. You can follow anyone on Twitter, and anyone can follow you. And I know you guys hear this kind of stuff once in a while on the news. Somebody tweeted something on the news. Uh, somebody tweeted something, that it hits the news, and oh, man, it goes viral. If you want to follow 500 complete strangers on Twitter, that's your right. If none follow you back, then it doesn't matter a lot. The other beauty of Twitter is breaking news. Twitter has proved its worth in recent years as a platform for breaking news. 
The simplicity of the site means that the first thing many people at the scene of a developing news story do is tweet about it. A few retweets later and the news has spread. So this has kind of led to Twitter being traditional, beating traditional news outlets to a story on many occasions. Even if you don't want to actively tweet yourself, you can use Twitter as a source for breaking news. They have uh, news aggregators and rolling news channels and journalists on Twitter that are all getting you the inside scoop of a story long before it hits the mainstream news outlets. Tracking trends as well as breaking news, Twitter is a great resource for tracking online trends. If a YouTube video is going viral, then it will be getting shared on Twitter. If there's a new meme out there that's spreading like wildfire, then it's highly likely it'll appear on Twitter. If a celebrity has done something no newsworthy but has managed to avoid the news leaking to the mainstream press, it will likely also appear on Twitter. Hashtags also figure into this, and most of the trends listed on Twitter use this simple method of assigning a particular subject to a tweet. You can tailor Twitter trends to suit you switching from worldwide to those emerging from a particular country. The use of hashtags is actually used as like a, um, uh, a way to a chronicle things that are similar. So um, if you see a hashtag out there and you see hashtag um, John Smith. So maybe somebody posts a story about John Smith and they add hashtag John Smith to it. When you search on Twitter under hashtag John Smith, you'll be able to find everything that's come up or that's related or that has had the hashtag John Smith added to it. So it's really done for, for a search mechanism on Twitter. Kind of an interesting way to do it. Company contact. Companies love Twitter. Businesses love Twitter. Um, most businesses are on Twitter. It, your favorite brand probably has a presence on Twitter for whatever product they sell or service they provide. Twitter is a great tool for brands to promote themselves and their products, but they are unable to push their wares onto consumers without consumers pushing back. Twitter does represent one of the quickest and easiest ways, however, though, to contact a company and get instant customer service. The response you receive might not be as good as you would have got if you sat and waited for a person on the phone, but you won't be kept on hold for hours before you get that attention. That's another thing that has become really hot on social media, and Twitter happens to be one of the ones that it's exceptionally hot on, is that people feel like this is someplace they can go to get live support. And even if that's not what the platform was intended for, that's what it's become. So if you've got a presence on Twitter, you can expect to get hit up for some kind of live support. And these businesses that are out there, they're growing on places like Twitter, they are definitely doing that. They've got somebody assigned to make sure that, that they are answering what's happening on there when people are, uh, are looking for questions and answers. Celebrities love Twitter. Not every famous person is on the site, but a high percentage are. It's another platform for them to promote themselves and their latest film, television show, book, perfume, whatever. In return, their fans gain a new way of accessing their heroes. So, you know, people can actually follow. I, I don't watch a lot of TV, so I really, um, I see that Tom Selleck's got a new show out. So, and I don't even know if he's on Twitter, to be honest, but... Um, I can tell you that if he was, that's a great place for people to go follow every move that he makes because he might be on Twitter and he might tweet out, oh, uh, things to promote his show launching next Thursday. And he might tweet, hey, don't miss, don't miss next Thursday. Um, something exciting is going to happen. Again, that has to happen in 140 characters or less. But it's like this instant access thing that people have these celebrities. It's... Um, it's really, Twitter's become amazing for that kind of stuff. While those who are really keen on certain famous people have always found ways to talk to them, Twitter makes it really easy. If a, a celebrity's on Twitter, then everyone else on Twitter can send a message to them. You know, it's not likely that the celebrity's going to respond because they may have one million followers on Twitter. 
but they actually get the message. And many people have communicated with celebrities in just that way. It's a creative outlet. Most of uh, what we've talked about so far is outlined reasons to follow other Twitter users, but you can easily turn this around by creating a Twitter presence that others want to follow. You're only limited by your creativity. And just like all the other platforms, you can create anything you want in your Twitter account as long as you are abiding by the rules. The other item is 140 characters. You can read novels, in-depth features, and articles several thousand words long, but there are times when you'd rather not have to. So this lack of attention span is why too long didn't read became so popular. And it's also certainly helped foster the popularity of Twitter. Because like we were just talking about, you only have 140 characters to say what you want to say in a tweet. That is excluding the URL, so you can get a URL in there also. That means people are forced to get to the point quickly, paring the facts down to their core essence. Sure, there may be a link to a longer news story, but it's surprising how much information you can consume from purely reading tweets. And we'll take a quick look at Twitter, and you'll see that that looks very much different than Facebook or Pinterest. And uh, it's almost like a foreign language in there. But I guess that, that's what makes Twitter pretty interesting. <laughs> I was trying to figure out how to write a 140-character foreign language. Okay, last up, we're going to look at my favorite, Facebook. This is the one that I know the best. This is where I spend my time. This is where my club spends it this time. We have 1.35 billion with a B monthly active users. And of that number, 1.2 are mobile. 1.2 billion are mobile. That's a really big deal. Almost 30% are ages 25 to 34, 53% are female, 47% are male, male, and there are 83 million fake profiles. What do you think of that? 83 million fake profiles. Uh, Judy says, the scandal stars are required to tweet during the taping. Oh, yeah, that's the tweeting thing is just craziness. All right, let's talk about why people are on Facebook. You can share with many people at once. Facebook's a pretty accepted means of communication now. It's a never-ending virtual social gathering that's filled with adopted puppies, cute kittens, baby announcements, viral articles, videos, events, groups, organizations, and fan pages. You can post photos, upload videos, instant message, register for events, buy products. Um, you can even actually call somebody through Facebook now. I had somebody call me through Facebook yesterday. So while she didn't actually have my phone number, she was able to actually ring me through Facebook. And the funny thing was talking to her, uh, when I talked to her about it, and she has my number, but she couldn't find it at the moment. She told me that she has begun calling people a lot through Facebook because the ringtone is so weird on the other end that people pick up their phone because they don't know what's going on. She said everybody answers their phone when she calls them on Facebook. So I thought that was kind of interesting. But the whole point with Facebook is that you can share with many people at once. You can see photos and videos. Uh, I'm currently visiting my newest grandchild, and I've posted many photos on Facebook for those at home to see. You can receive updates or comments on Facebook. You'll find entertaining and funny posts. And you can also keep up with news and current events. And of course, latest and greatest is networking. That's what Facebook is all about, is networking. And we'll take a quick look at what Facebook looks like. The beauty of Facebook, also one of their nice uh, parts, is that when you go to a home page like this, you have the ability to have all your information listed there. For example, a Crystal River Computer Users Group, you'll find the link to our website. You'll find a phone number. You'll find links to be able to find upcoming classes. You'll find the... Um, Posts that we put out several times a day. We have our newsletter hooked into that, so it publishes automatically. And we have APCUG's blog hooked into our Facebook page as well. So it 
we'll automatically post on our page anytime somebody at APCUG puts out a new blog. Let's talk a little bit about the key systems that you're going to need to make this kind of thing work for you. We're going to look at website lead generation lead conversion and blogging. So these are four of what I consider to be the most important key systems. The first is your website. Everybody knows that uh, you've all got to have a website. So even if you're just trying to rebuild, I know that APCUG, I believe, uh, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, still allows you to have a subdomain. If you can no longer afford a standalone website, I believe they allow you to have a subdomain now on APCUG. Is that true, Judy? I see Roger's typing. And Judy's typing also. Oh, okay, Roger, we can, we'll talk about that, how you can choose a good name. Okay, well, I guess as soon as Judy lets me know the answer to that question, I'll pass it on to you. Like I said, if you no longer can afford a website standalone, um, you, I believe, can have a, a subdomain on APCUG. And you have to remember that your website is your virtual brick and mortar. It is impo as important as that standalone business. Um, okay, we host member group websites. They can use their own domain name. Yes, okay. There's your answer. They're just, uh, as I was saying, websites are just exactly like a standalone business. It, you own it, and nobody can take it away from you. It houses your products, your services, your contact forms, your storefront if you have one, your appointment center if you have one, and more. So um, one of the things that I try to discourage people from is to stay away from places like Wix, Squarespace, Weebly. Um, you want to stay away from those guys. All they're really doing is using you to bring more customers to them. And again, you can sometimes end up under their control. You want to make sure you own your real estate online in the same way that you would own your real estate if you had a brick and mortar business downtown. So having said that, we're going to move on to our lead generation. We're going to talk a little bit about tweet, pin, or like. Pick the proper channels. It's all about research. You have to know who your audience and influencers are before you strike, start to target them. You're going to align and focus your content. Providing consistent, high-quality content for multiple social media channels as well as a blog is no simple task. You want to create all of your topic on a, all of your content on a single topic at once. Remember, people are on social media sites to be entertained, educated, and empowered. If you keep that in mind when you're creating your content, it will make it so much easier. Ask yourself when you create content for any of these social media sites: How did I empower? How did I educate? How did I entertain? That's the key that's going to bring people to you. Next, you're going to want to try to expand and establish your expertise. One way to set yourself apart from your competition, if you have competition, and actually us user groups don't, because many of you are Mac and Windows at the same time, uh, again, is to set yourself apart as the expert within your field or industry. Social media and blogs are a great way to demonstrate your expertise. If you can solve a common problem in the process, all the better. Um, I saw a presentation today uh, here at the VTC about Linux. Linux, Linux, I don't know if I'm saying that right because I don't know how to use it. But just the fact that I got exposed to that, I think is going to make me go look a little more. So um, you want to you want to put things out there that are going to make people think that will empower them, um, that gives them more knowledge, that, that has gives them some place to come ask questions. We do a lot of, um, well, some of the clubs out there, for example, offer free computer repair, I've seen. So that's a new way to draw in members. Um, special interest groups are a new way to draw in members. And the people that are usually at those spe special interest groups are the experts in that area whether it be on WordPress or Photoshop or that kind of thing. So you want to try to, to get those people in the areas that you need them in to help bring people in. And the other thing is don't be afraid to consult with your target audience. Go ask somebody. They'll appreciate the fact that you're reaching out to them. And don't be afraid. They won't be afraid to share their opinions. 
So like I said, many people think of social media as a live helpline, but ask your membership, what is it we can do for you? What do you want from us? And that will help you rebuild your group. Above all, all social is a two-way street. Be sure to create conversations. And above all else, be sure that you keep self-promotion to a minimum. You don't want to be too sales pitchy. People just kind of run from that thing. One of the examples that I use a lot is I tell people, if every time you went to your favorite grocery store, someone was standing outside trying to sell you a new house, how long would it be before you quit going there? It wouldn't be that long before you quit going there. But here's the other thing. If, if I knew the guy that was selling that house is there every single day, and on day, the next time I come by, he sees me, he says, hey, Sabrina, how you doing? That's all he has to say. And the next time I come to the grocery store, he says, I know it's Valentine's Day, Sabrina, here's your flower. And the next time he comes to the grocery store, I come to the grocery store, he says, Sabrina, did you know that we're putting in cherry cabinets in that new house we're building? And I'd be like, yeah, okay, cool. And the next time I come to the grocery store, I might say to him, what kind of countertops you got for that kitchen you're working on? Do you see how you want to, you can be able to begin to build a rapport there with that guy that's standing there selling houses? And so him and I chat every time I go to the store about that house he's selling. And, and one day, lo and behold, you never know, I'm in the market for a house. Well, I'm going to remember the guy that talked to me about the countertops and the cabinets and brought me a flower and made me smile and didn't try to sell his house to me every single time I saw him. So you want to remember to give uh, the right information at the right time, and uh, don't be too pushy. You never know what will happen. Then you're going to give them a well-timed nudge in the right direction. Giving the potential members the push that they need at certain points will increase your chances of closing the deal. Make sure that those potential new members know that this month, you've got a presentation coming up at your special interest group about uh, Photoshop, and you know that those people like Photoshop. Make sure the people that like Photoshop know that so they can come and mingle. Now, we're going to talk about lead conversion a little bit. Like I said, you want to promote your content in a way that's entertaining and also native to each platform. So we talked a little bit about the three platforms. Twitter, you have to create something that's 140 characters or less, and it gets their attention. Questions are a good thing for Twitter. Um, did you know Linux is free? Linux operating system is free. You have to figure out how to word that to get people's attention. Uh, with Pinterest, you might post a picture of uh, some fabulously built computer built using Linux. Uh, Facebook, you can post a link to a website that shows you how to build it. So again, you want to just try to build uh, content that's interesting and native to each platform. And you don't want to only post links to your content. You don't want to just use your social media channels as RSS feeds and not much else. You, you want your content to be an important part of your social media strategy, but it shouldn't be the only thing that you do. So don't only post links to your content. But you want to drive people back to your website because remember that's your brick and mortar. So we talked about the website and promoting that, how you can promote it, putting content out there that's entertaining, engaging, empowering. Drive people back to your website. Don't oversell. Um, when you get them there, you're going to want to make sure that you're doing some things for lead conversion. So make sure that you've got a newsletter they can sign up for or a contact form or that it lists the time and date of your next meeting or your special interest groups or whatever you may have. So you now kind of have a guide for some creating some non-paid content, but how do you track the results? You can start with Google Analytics. Google Analytics will keep track of how many leads you're converting via social media. There are other tools out there. You can use Clout, Cred, the Peer Index as well. And remember that they're only tools. Don't get hung up on the numbers. If they're not what you want, adjust your plan. Change your content, adjust your posting schedule, revisit your target market. Last item I want to talk about for a minute is blogging. We uh, blog on our site not as regularly as we should. Right now we're probably only putting out about two, maybe three uh, 
blog posts a month. But one of the things that we do on our site is that if I find something new or interesting or Selena finds something new or interesting, uh, particularly if it's free, we blog about it, we go visit it, we learn it, and we blog about it. The blog is how we drive traffic to our website. And our website currently gets, uh, on the average, about 40 to 45 hits a day. And remember, your real estate, like we talked about, is the most important thing you have. While your website is virtual, you do own it. You do not, however, own any social media sites. So if one or all of them shuts down, what do you have? So remember, use your blog to educate, entertain, empower, and get that call to action going. Be sure your strategy includes driving people to your website. Do not rely on social media sites alone. Remember to use them only as a tool. Remember that someone else owns those sites and they control what is seen and heard and even if it is seen and heard. So um, you want to make sure that you're utilizing them to the most efficient level that you possibly can. Facebook's getting a lot of flack right now because the organic reach is so low for pages. Uh, I've never understood what would make people think it would continue to be free anyway. They are a business after all. They can't give it away any more than anybody else in business can. However, uh, when you drive people into your business or your building or your website, you control what they see in here. Here's a couple just key system bonuses for you. When you're tweeting links to your content, tweet directly to influencers, but only if it's relative to them. If, they're, if we're doing something about Microsoft, for example, you're doing a tweet on a Microsoft product, tag a Microsoft person. It'll then get viewed by his, it'll get retweeted through his system and you'll get exposure like that. Ask the influencers with whom you already have a relationship to tweet your content to their followers. Ask people to help you spread the word. When you post a link to content on your Facebook page, tag your relevant influencers or somebody mentioned in the article. Again, that will get shared on theirs. Post your content relevant rel groups and communities in LinkedIn, Facebook, and Google groups and answer the questions rel relevant to your industry and product. All right, we're coming right up here on the hour. I've got just two more slides for you. Let's talk about your social media success real quick. Martha A. Sanchez is a friend of mine. I got this graphic from her. And we're going to start at 2 o'clock. Make sure you have clarity in your message. Keep things simple and understandable. Have clear and realistic marketing goals. You're not going to increase membership by 50% with a couple of tweets, so don't think that you're going to. Make sure you're including those clear calls to action. Let people know how or where to get that empowering discount or that entertaining newsletter or join that engaging group. Make it clear. Click here. Sign up there. Use this link. Give them content they want. It's not all about you. They are following you to get something they want or need. Help them solve a problem or save some money. Be consistent. This is the most important item. You cannot jump all over the board with your message. Determine the message you want to convey and be consistent. Respond to people when they reach out to you. Be consistent with your posting and your blog. Use a calendar. Schedule your content creation. Schedule your social media posts and respond to your audience. Don't forget your shutdown time. Avoid social media overload. That's a really hard thing for me to do is to get away from Facebook. How should I begin? Review your stats, determine your target market and their location. Create your profile and get your brand name. Note, get your brand name on all sites, even if you're not using them yet. If you have a name, uh, whatever name that you choose to use, you want to go out to all of your social media sites and go ahead and lock that name up because you don't want to discover down the road that somebody took it when you were ready to get to Twitter. Start on one social media platform at a time. Create your social media plan. Blog, post, tweet, engage, respond. Have fun, ladies and gentlemen. Make it fun. It's not supposed to be a job. All right. Here we go. I know we don't have a lot of time left. Sorry about that. What tool, Beverly asks, what tool are you using to blog? Uh, I Well, our site is a WordPress site, and so we blog right on our website. 
Let's see. Google, Jane says Google Blogger, Tumblr, or WordPress, which is the best tool? I have not used Google Blogger or Tumblr. I only use WordPress. And I use WordPress for a number of sites that I blog on, which is not just the computer club, but I blog on several sites. So I'm usually writing a couple of blogs a week. There was also a question about how to pick your name. Remember, you want to try to keep those things short. Um, if things get too long, it's really hard to get people to pay attention for a great length of time. Um, it's easier to say to somebody, um, my website is marie.com rather than mariecalendarmakespotpies.com. But you have to figure out how to brand it so that uh, people understand and can find you. Do we have any more questions? Francis is typing. Mark, does that? Uh, thank you, Mark. You're welcome. Yeah, and I want to thank you, Sabrina, for giving us a very informative presentation. And again, remind everybody that a video recording was made of this and that it will be available on the website as soon as we can. And I uh, want to thank the people behind the scenes, uh, the real Jim Evans, uh, the real Huey Paplock, uh, Paplock and uh, Julie Taylor for uh, being the producer and getting all these things together. So uh, thank you very much, and we'll see you in May for the next one. Thank you very much, and have a great afternoon or evening. All right. Bye-bye.